You know, you had to think for a minute, how many of you did not, did not have a long and windy road to get right where you are? <laughs> I was just thinking when I was hearing that, how many doors have been opened to get us right where we are? Think about being about that big and opening door to your first kindergarten class. And then growing up a little bit and graduating to first grade, second grade, third grade, on, high school, college, wherever the journey led you. New homes, the doors of new friends. As you got older, new dates and lovers and acquaintances and new jobs and wow, the doors we've opened. Of course, for every door we've opened, there have been a lot of doors we've closed too. Doors we've closed on having to move and change our lifestyle. Doors of people that have gone and passed on. There have been so many doors in our life of opportunities we didn't take and we missed. Doors have a big, big, big significance in our lives. This is the 10th tablet of our Stations of the Cosmic Christ, and it's one of the simpler tablets done by M.C. Richards in the 50s. And it is the I am the door, or the gate, or the way, depending on the translation from the Gospel of John 10.9. And as Dr. Rogers spoke so beautifully, that these I am statements have a universal message. They are the logos, the word of God, saying I am the way to everlasting life, to unconditional love, to unending grace and joy and peace and happiness. I am the way, the spirit is the way. And that's part of the process of understanding the greater message. But for us today, there's also a personal message for each one of these tablets and each one of these sayings that I am, you are, we are, the doors of our own life. If you look at this simple but amazing tablet, the door is an invitation to us. An invitation. It's always also a choice we make. Every time we see a door physically or a door in our own mind of a new opportunity, a new thought, a new experience that's available, it's a choice we get to make. And I guess the idea today when it's walk through the door is to be conscious. I want us all to be conscious and aware of when we make the choices of what doors we're going to walk through. The physical doors are moving structures that have two ways, an in and an out. They're a passageway for us, and we can choose to move in and out to enter or exit. Now, there are other doorways of our mind. The doorway, the archetype of the door, which would mean a portal, a passageway, a guide to something new. And as we know, we've talked, we talk about every week when we talk about the archetypes, there's no fixed archetype. The door isn't always open or it isn't always closed. Sometimes we open those doors. With courage and curiosity, we open the doors and cross the threshold to something new and exciting, timid and afraid a little bit, but we open those doors with that courage because courage can guide us through. Sometimes we open the doors timidly and not really sure we want to be there, and oftentimes we close the doors. Now, a closed door has several sides. A closed door can mean a time to be quiet and to connect with spirit and meditate and pray. It can be a time for intimacy. It can be intimate connection. It can also be a time of disconnecting. Now, disconnecting can be good. We can di disconnect from the noise of the world and just be, or we can disconnect because we're afraid. It's our choice. We decide how we want to use the doorways of our life. So today, what I want to talk about is the doorways in a more spiritual sense, the doorways of the unconscious and the conscious mind. 
the doorways of moving from our physical thinking, our physical experience to the spiritual thinking, and from our old life that we want to appreciate every day, like we read, have gratitude for every moment that's so precious and the possibilities that live here, but also at the same time, be open and available to something new because every single day, every moment offers us something new. So if there's all these possibilities in life, the beautiful 13th century mystic says, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Why do we shut ourselves out from all the possibilities that life brings us? Well, first of all, it has to do with our perceptions of life and our perception of ourself in life. Every one of these experiences on these long and winding road, all the experiences have taught us about life. Now, it hasn't been a full view of life because we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. So the experiences we've picked up and the thoughts and ideas belie and beliefs we've t picked up about ourselves and about life, we start seeing everywhere and we, we travel this journey and we build up these perceptions. Now this isn't something new for William Blake wrote a, a poem called The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Heaven and Hell. And he says, if the doors of perception were cleansed, if we could clean out all those perceptions that we've picked up along the way that don't serve our higher good, if we could pick those, clean those off, everything would appear as it is. Infinite, open, and available to us. Everything would appear as it is. Infinite. But man and woman have closed themselves up until all they see, all the things they see, they see through the narrow chinks of the cavern of their minds. And what is the cavern of our mind? The cavern of our mind is our narrow, limited thinking, our smallness, that we've closed ourselves in to this little room. And we, we see things limited instead of the expansive possibilities that are always available. So today we want to talk about how, we, how do we clear up some of that perception and cleanse ourselves to have a new experience of life. Well, then we come to the unconscious and the conscious mind. The unconscious mind holds a lot of those experiences and beliefs and thoughts and impulses that we pick up of how to deal in life, how to show up what we need to do, what we learn from our you know, different experiences we've had. And Sigmund Freud, didn't, he didn't coin conscious and unconscious mind, but he made them popular. And he talked about the unconscious and the conscious mind, the, the rooms in our mind. And he equated the unconscious mind with a large entry hall, which holds all of our feelings, our experiences, our thoughts, and our beliefs. It's a huge entry hall. And Attached to that, adjoining uh, uh, it, is a smaller room, kind of like a drawing room, a smaller room. And that's our conscious mind, which is our present moment awareness. That's what we're aware of right now. Now, our conscious mind holds all this stuff. And thank God we don't have all this stuff in our mind at all the time. We're busy enough as it is. But the adjoining, the little threshold between these two, the unconscious and the conscious, because the conscious mind isn't aware of what's all going on in the unconscious, thank goodness. But on that threshold, we have a watchman a watchman that, like a sensor, decides, hmm, this feeling will come up, this belief will come up, and that watchman will decide what they're going to let in. What, what, yeah, that's a good one, I'll let that one in, or, nah, that goes right along with what I think about. Yeah, we'll let that one in. This little sensor here, the watchman, and they put all of those acceptable thoughts, not necessarily good thoughts, but acceptable ones into our subconscious mind that's closer to our conscious mind, and then we can pick those up. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of us have really lazy watchmen. Really lazy watchmen. And every, you know, if you have a lazy watchman, and you know, these impulses from our unconscious are knocking at the door a lot, and they want to get through. You're not good enough. You remember those experiences? You remember what you did? Oh my God, you're not good enough. You're not worth it. You know, they want to let all these thoughts and feelings in. Or old programming, you know, that old negative programming that we've worked so hard to get rid of. 
it still wants to be there and come up. And if we have a lazy watchman that we haven't really put on guard to be programmed for positiveness, that hasn't been programmed to do the right thing, we're going to let in all those old, outdated thoughts and feelings that become negative. And you know, that watchman is a volunteer position. <laughs> We can replace it. I think if it's not doing a good enough job for you, you might want to think about hiring a new one. Because once those old, outdated, negative thoughts come over, they take over our free will. And then we become victims to life instead of the powerful beings that we're meant to be created to be. And so instead of using our life to be a beautiful open door that we can keep shut when we don't want, that we're in control, we start feeling like victims. And then we become prisoners of our own consciousness. Do you know what I mean? We become prisoners of those old thoughts that keep us tied up and bound to the past instead of creating the newness and being selected of what we bring forward. I have a beautiful example of this. Now again, these things aren't new. Blake wrote that in 1908, and I want to share a little a bit of, about a poem that was written in 1944 by Jean-Paul Sartre, who is a 20th century uh, novelist and playwright, and he was also an adv advocate of existentialism, which says, it's a philosophy that says, we come to this world with no meaning or purpose at all. And we come to a world that makes no sense at all. And we are here, and our sole purpose is to make sense of our life, to find some of our own meaning. And Sartre truly believed in the intimate connections with people are where we'd learn most about our purpose in life and where our choices would lie. And also that we have the freedom, the choice, and the ability to make good choices or bad choices. Well, in his 1944 one-act play, No Exit, it takes place in hell. And three deplorable characters are locked in a tiny drawing room. Oh, it's locked for eternity. And they were expecting, they were pretty deplorable characters, and they did pretty terrible, awful things. And they were expecting when they got to hell, there would be some medieval torture devices to give them great pain. But they found that wasn't where they had the great pain. Other people were their hell. They hadn't learned how to get along with each other. And we can only learn that when we get along with ourselves. So even when at the end of the play, they found that this drawing room that had been locked suddenly became unlocked. And they could make the choice to leave and live a different life, a better life, a new life. They could choose something different. Not one of them left. They stayed there in that room. We want to choose better. Now, what Bishop Mark Andres says about the archetype of the door is the door is our human will. Our human will. It's the will for us to make choices all the time. We can choose all the time to do better. And what I say a lot is when we know better, we do better. Well, how do we learn better? How do we know better? That's why we're here is we learn better by going to classes, by having teachers, by being with people that we know are on a path that we admire and respect, by helping ourselves, helping each other. We do better when we know better. So if we have our will to make a better choice, we have to be the guard at our own, the door of our own mind. The guard. And that guard needs to be trained to bring in the positive thoughts that make ourselves better and help other people. There's other things this human will can do. A room that I haven't told you about yet, but you all know. It's the room, the upper room. It's the upper room that leads us to the super consciousness, that leads us to the divine mind. Ernest Holmes said, back of every human thought is a divine thought waiting for admission. Back of every human thought we have is a divine thought that's waiting for admission 
through our mind, through the power of our mind, you and I get to choose. We get to choose what kind of thoughts we think. Ernest Holmes goes on to say that every successful person, every one of them, has in bold letters at the doorway of their consciousness, I am successful. I believe in myself. I have faith in what I do. Something like that has a successful thought in bold letters right, in the, right there, right in the front of their mind. And people with thoughts of failure. I mean, we have failure once in a while, but thoughts and lives of failure find that there's a corresponding law, the law of cause and effect, the law of correspondence, that will bring, us, bring them a lot of things to fail at. So if we want a better, well, no, no, I'll give you a test. Think about the reality in your life right now. Is it what you want? Is there an area you'd like to have a little better, something you want more of? Then we might want to think again because we know that thoughts create our experience. So we want to think again. This journey, though, that we talk about, the journey to the upper room, the journey of getting a new watchman, whatever you want to do, is not a journey out there. That secret chamber to the divine mind is right in our hearts. The 13th century Rumi said, we keep knocking on all these doors, looking for the answer, looking for hope, looking for something more, when all we have to do is knock on the door of our own heart. That's where the answers are. It's not somewhere out there. It's right here. That threshold we cross from the conscious mind to the superconscious mind. Rumi goes on to say, the door is wide and open. Don't go back to sleep. People continually cross the threshold between the two worlds. Don't go back to sleep. We need to be staying awake and conscious and aware of the world that we are creating. If we knock on this door long enough, joy, joy is going to respond and open the door. And our job, what we're called to do is walk through that door. That's our call, walk through the door of love, something new, something greater. But we can't stop there. We have to look and see who's there. We have to look and see who's with us on this journey. One of my other favorite poets, E.E. E. Cummings, said, listen, there's a hell of a good universe next door. Let's go. Are you ready? Yes. Some are. The rest we'll just kind of bring along with us. Yes, it's good. It's already there. You and I are called to recognize, ah, oh, it's already here. So just close your eyes for a minute. and just I ask you to just unravel yourself so you're keeping the passageway, the doorway to the superconscious, the divine mind, the infinite good already available. As we open the door of our heart and use that power of love affirmatively, as we use that power of love and connectedness and goodness, we start looking around and understanding we are on this journey together as one big family. We're here to learn from each other. We're here to inspire each other, to teach each other. We're here to recognize and know and be inspired. Let the door of wisdom and the door of love and the door of light be continually moving on well-oiled hinges that we move in this circular motion of giving and receiving to be a beacon of light and to receive the light, to be an inspiration of affirmative love and to receive the affirmative love, to allow ourselves to consciously know in our minds that we are deserving of good right now, that everything we need is here right now, to know that in our hearts and our minds and to open that door that we become a living vessel of the cooperation between the human mind and the divine mind, humanity and divinity. We are that expression here on earth. How good it is to feel empowered, 
to let that guard at our mind hold what is right and true, to receive the messages from spirit and let them move forth from our eyes, from our hearts. It's time. It's time we know. Ah, so as we feel that moving through us, I'm going to invite us in this moment to just come back awake and to look and see who's around, who's on this journey. We started today and we didn't do our meet and greet time. It wasn't by choice, I forgot. So stand up, welcome your neighbor to this one big family. Say, thank God you are here. <laughs> I did forget. I did forget, right? You did you did it already? You did meet and greet? Oh well I forgot we already did it. So sit down. I just forgot, I forgot. So um anyway, welcome to the big family. Know that I love each and every one of you. We're on this journey together and I know today we've opened up new doors of possibility. I just say thank you for being you. And so it is.